Drip irrigation is another system that we use here at the student farm. And we use it mainly during the summer on all of our tomatoes, our eggplants, our peppers, our summer squash, long beans, melons, winter squash. All of these crops are being irrigated with this kind of drip tape. Um, this is uh, plastic drip tape that has an emitter every eight inches in the tape. And it is either laid on the surface or put underground or put beneath a mulch um, depending on the situation, uh, and it provides a even, steady amount of water directly to the plant roots and not on any other part of the bed at all, not in the furrows, not on uh, parts of the bed that don't have plants. So uh, just by its very concentrating of the water, it's reducing losses to evaporation, and if you, if you time your water well, you're also reducing losses to water um, moving below the root zone because you can, you can, you can uh, tailor the water amount to exactly the amount of uh, evapotranspiration that's happening in the field over the summer. This, this um, drip tape system requires about 10 to 20 pounds per square inch of water pressure. And at the farm, when we set up our underground system, we would have a four inch riser for the sprinkler system. And then right next to it, we would set up a outlet for the drip system. Here we have a system that has a separate pipe coming out of the ground for the drip. And it goes to a timer. And these timers can be set to let the water through at any interval that you think will work best for your crops. Our water system coming out of these wells is very uh, clean and, and uh, doesn't have a lot of particulates. But there are many wells, uh, or if you're pumping out of a canal or you're pumping out of a river, where you're going to have sediment and you're going to have algae and you're going to have all kinds of sand particles that won't go through the drip system. It'll plug up the drip system within a day. So it's really important to have a filter. This is a typical drip filter here for a, a, a hose spigot, but it's uh, similar to what you would buy if you had a larger system. Basically, there is a, uh, a filter that goes uh, inside a container. The water goes through it and the sediment uh, algae, whatever, the impurities are all filtered out. The slightly tricky thing about this is that if you really have a high level of impurities, this filter can clog up pretty quickly and you need to clean it often. There are really large systems, sand media filters that have back flush um, functions that are worth buying if you have a large acreage and you have uh, impure water. So uh, they're expensive though, but it's worth it if you want to use drip. The number of drip lines you want to put out in your field is going to determine what size manifold, which is the main water line that's carrying the water from the valve uh, to each individual drip line on each bed. Uh, the size of the manifold is a function of how many drip lines you want to put out. Uh, what you see here is a um, two-inch polyethylene manifold that uh, we have about uh, 30 beds that uh, this is uh, providing drip irrigation to. And uh, we have uh, punched a hole in, in the edge of the manifold. And in that hole, we have put a, um, what's called a barb starter. So this, this uh, barb punches back into the manifold, and when the water comes through, uh, the, the edge of the barb pushes against the manifold, and there's, there shouldn't be a leak. <laughs> um, and then on this side of the barb, there's a spin lock coupler. Uh, this uh, collar uh, goes up and down 
on the barb and when you put the drip tape uh, over the barb and you spin the, uh, the coupler over it, um, it should be so strong that you can't pull it off. And so it's a very secure fit. So we put this back into the manifold and when the water comes through, it comes out of the manifold and goes into the drip tape. So the drip tape can be uh, either on the surface or underground, uh, or it could be covered by a plastic mulch. It depends on what your environment is like. It depends on how much you want to control weeds. Um, it depends on what the crop is. Most of the time, we bury our drip tape about five inches down uh, in order to keep it underground away from the crows. We have very smart crows here, and if the drip tape is on the surface, they figure out that they can come and peck a hole in it and get water. And so if we leave it on the surface, uh, we have to fix it a lot. <laughs> We've learned the hard way. Uh, another strategy is to have the drip on the surface but cover it with a plastic mulch. We have a couple crops like peppers that uh, we like to have the water very near to the pepper when we transplant it into the ground. Uh, and then we can control weeds using the plastic mulch and we don't have to uh, bury the, uh, the drip tape because it's covered up by the mulch and the uh, crows don't see it. In addition, uh, because the mulch is covering up the ground, weeds don't grow. If you have the drip tape on the surface, you'll get weeds growing um, wherever the water comes out. Uh, and that can be that just adds to the work of things. Another advantage of drip irrigation is that if you don't have a lot of uh, volume of water available, you don't need as much to run drip lines. So a typical drip line, and it varies on the different flow rates you get for the drip line, but it, it uses about uh, a gallon per minute per 100 linear feet. So often we have 200-foot uh, beds and we have two rows of drip, two lines of drip um, on the bed. And so we're using four gallons a minute for the whole bed. And then if we are running, say, six beds all at once, that would be 24 gallons a minute. Well, that's way less than we would use with uh, the sprinkler system or with the... Um, the furrow irrigation system. So if you have a limited well capacity, a limited, limited volume of water you can irrigate with, the drip system allows you to do a fairly large area with uh, a minimal amount of water. You don't need that large volume of water for the drip that you do for the sprinkler or for the uh, furrow irrigation.